to the second speaker of, of this session, who is uh, Hai Zhao Yang from Purdue University, who will present SelectNet, learning, from, learning to sample from the wild for imbalanced training data. Thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk about SelectNet, which is based on self-paced learning to learn how to use data from unlabeled data, um, sample from unlabeled data to help for the training with imbalanced data. This is joint work with my student at National University of Singapore, Yun Yu Liu, and um, a colleague at University of Chicago, Ting Yang Gao. Today, I'm going, to, I'm going to address three questions. First, I will introduce what is self-paced learning. Second, I will talk about its benefit for imbalanced data. Finally, I will talk about its application to mathematical and scientific machine learning. For example, how to use it for solving high dimensional PDEs. So what is self-paced learning? Let me, let me borrow an example by Daphna to talk about what is self-paced learning. For example, when we want to learn how to play with puzzles, I think the first example we, we play with is not very difficult, not the case in, in this figure. Probably we will start from some simple examples. For example, um, the toy example in this figure, and gradually we increase the difficulty to, to, to get more and more difficult puzzles. So this is the whole curriculum for learning how to play with puzzles. We just start from simple example and gradually move on to difficult examples. This is the, the, the basic idea of self-paced learning. Let me use another example to talk more detail about the self-paced learning. For example, image classification in supervised machine learning. So in supervised machine learning, we usually assume that data are randomly sampled from, the, from a data distribution. The training data and the, and the test data, they are from the same distribution and um, different samples might have different features but we want to train a new network to learn a in, an invariant, some invariant features to make classification. So if we start from simple examples, then it's quite easy to get the main idea of the invariant features to make, make a decision. For example, the three chairs here, we, 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 we can conclude that a, the definition of a chair might be something that we, with a long back um, and four legs and something to support ourselves. So it's very easy to get this intuition from simple examples. But if we learn from difficult examples, then it might be more challenging to get invariant features to make a decision to classify these images. For example, the, 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 the left figure here, um, the, 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 the back is not quite obvious. And the middle fig figure here, we don't have four legs. And finally, the, the, the right figure here, we um, it's, it's quite different from the other examples. So if we learn from these difficult examples, it might not be easy to get the, the main def the, the definition of a chair correctly. So if we start from simple example first and then gradually move on to deep, more difficult examples, then we can stabilize the learning process about what is definition of a chair. So the, the main feature of self-paced learning, as you, have, you, you may have known um, from the, the two examples above is that um, we, we don't have random selection in, in, in choosing the training data. We have some preference. For example, we select easier example first. We learn from easy example and to get some rough idea about some definition. And then we slowly explore more difficult examples. For example, the, the more difficult chairs you, you have seen to get, to get better idea. So, um, the, the benefit of this preference is that we could speed up the learning. For example, the, the convergence for simple example might be faster than um, the, the, the training with more, more challenging examples. And then once we have rough idea, we can use challenging example to refine the definition of the rough idea of, for example, the definition of the chair. So um, we could finally improve the performance. Um, at the beginning, we don't have we, we have, we will have less distraction from difficult examples. And finally, we, we have difficult, exam, difficult examples to refine the definition. So um, in general, 
we have some empirical benefit from the self-paced learning procedure. So this is the main idea of self-paced learning. So let us talk about the mathematical idea about self-paced learning. How we can use some mathematical formula to formulate self-paced learning in our um, op optimization, for example. So let me take, take the example about image classification. So um, let us assume that we have some given training data, like xi is one image and yi is its label. So usually we want to train a neural network, phi, such that it can classify the label y given the sample x according to some loss function capital L. So we just want to minimize over all the possible parameters of the neural network to, to try to minimize the loss function here. So in this classification model, we don't have the self-paced learning because we treat all samples um, equally. So how can we implement the self-paced learning idea in the optimization objective function so that we can have better results? So um, this, this idea was, um, was um, discussed by Kuma and Jiang a few years ago. The, the, the rough idea is that they introduce a vector V um, to, to represent whether we include or not include the training example in the loss function. For example, if we is equal, we i is equal to one, that means that we pay this example x i in the loss function. If we i is equal to zero, it means that we, the, the term corresponding to x i is equal to zero, so we don't consider it in the ob objective function. So um, the, the lambda, the lambda is a positive number such that we can, we can, we can consider it as a um, reward when we consider the example xi. For example, if we let vi as one, then we have a reward lambda to reduce the, the objective function. If we take vi as zero, then we don't have this reward. So this is the, the original self-paced learning model proposed several years ago. Let us um, discuss in more detail about how we can carry out the self-paced learning procedure using this optimization model. So as I said, lambda, it can be considered as the reward. And um, if we take vi equal to one, we have one reward to reduce the loss function. And correspondingly, if vi is equal to one, then we might have some non-zero non um, quantity here which can be considered as the risk when we take the example xi. So we have to balance between taking the reward and the risk to minimize the objective function here. And this balancing idea can help us to carry out the, the idea of self-paced learning in image classification. For example, if the reward is greater than the risk, then it means that this example is simple because it's, it's almost correctly classified because, because the, the mistake here is, is small. So we, we choose vi equal to one and we include this simple example in the, in, the, in the loss function. If the reward is less than the risk, this means that the, the example might be challenging and we, we don't want to consider it at the early stage of the training. So we choose vi equal to zero. So um, in sum, according to the, the, the conclusion above, we know that in the early stage, when, um, when all the, almost all the most examples are, are not correctly classified in the early stage, then this example, they, they can be considered as difficult example. So we, we only choose a few simple examples with small mistakes in the loss function to train. So in the early stage of the learning, we, we just use a few simple examples to learn the concept about the image classification. And then gradually, um, when we optimize the, the new network, then the new network can correctly classify more and more examples. So once we can correctly classify these examples, then the risk will be smaller than the reward. And we think that the, the example they become easier and hence we, we put them into the loss function gradually. So this means that um, according to the statements here, at first we only use a few examples to change the neural network and gradually we include more and more examples that, that are considered 
difficult examples previously. So according to the explanation here, we have we can explain that why the, the, the objective function here can carry out the self-paced learning procedure. Okay, so um, if we take a look at this optimization problem, we, 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 we could realize that the, the n is the number of data samples here. So if we include v as the, as the actual variable to be optimized, then the size of v might be quite large because the training, uh, training, uh, the size of training data might be very large. So this is not computational cheap to achieve this goal. So uh, maybe, maybe this is motivation to, to propose the, a new, another new network, which is called the mental net to replace the, the variable v. So instead of a training, training to get a v, um, Jian, they, they, they propose a new neural network with a smaller number set of parameter such that we can use this neural network with variable in between zero and one to replace V. So when, when the, the, the select, when, when the mental net take the variable one, it means that we, we want to include the, the training example in the loss function. When the mental net take the variable zero, then it means that we don't want to take this example in, chain, in the training. So essentially we replace the, the, the vector V with a new network and um, to get the, the mental net idea. So um, in the mental net idea for image classification, they, they, own, they apply the mental net for image classification with balanced data. If we apply the, the mental net idea to in balanced data, the performance is not as good as the, as, um, the case for balanced data. So this motivate our work to propose a new idea for imbalanced data. So we will borrow the idea of another, another neural network for adaptively choosing the, 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 the example in the, in the loss function to deal with the imbalanced data issue. So um, we propose a new loss function here to carry out the idea of selection net network with um, for, for, for imbalanced data. So let us assume that D is the whole training data and D prime is the, the training data for minor classes. U prime is the, um, the, the, the minor classes from unlabeled data. We, we could use the, the current classification network to classify the unlabeled data to get some, some um, approximate label so, so that we can use this approximate label, label in the, in the loss function here. So the main difference of the selection net here and the meta net here is that we, we only apply the, the selection network to the, to the um, minor classes. And um, we, we include unlabeled data by using this classification network into the loss function to augment the data of minor classes. This can, this can increase the number of minor classes data such that we can get better results for minor classes when we have imbalanced data. Um, just a quick heads up, you have about a minute left to wrap up. Okay, so, um, so here's the slide for, for, um, for a operation study. So um, we compared the original training without, with, without select, this selection net. We also compare some other algorithms like oversampling algorithm. So the self-paced learning here is our proposed algorithm only using U, U prime without D prime and the const, context data is using D prime without U prime and the final selection net is to use D prime and U prime together. And we can see that the results are much better than, than um, the original result, result without the selection network. So let me quickly um, introduce idea for applying the selection network for solving high dimensional PDEs. For example, we, if we have a high dimensional PDE, we want to solve it using the least square idea. That this is the original loss function. And then if we want to include a selection network into the, the loss function, we could apply as another new network to adapt to choose the, 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 the sample in the, in, the, in the loss function. We can understand this selection network as adaptive mesh in the, in the mesh free method. Um, we adapt it assign some training weights to the data. Um, this can help to, 
to improve the convergence. Let me quickly use one example to, to illustrate the, the benefit. For example, uh, we it's solve probably time to move to the conclusion sooner rather. Okay, the, the conclusion is that is selection network can, can identify the, 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 the error where we, we have large error and improve the convergence. Thanks. I have one question for you that, um, uh, actually there were a few questions that uh, again, I want to combine them a little bit to just get some clarity because uh, there were questions about the relations between the self-paced learning um, and um, multi-scale learning, semi-supervised learning and curriculum learning. I have only heard one of these four terms uh, before and uh, maybe it would be great to use uh, you being here to clarify these relations a little bit for us um, and uh, feel free to start your video also again okay so um, thank you very much for the questions um, I I believe they have something in common with the ideas they are um, in, they they are similar in some extent to some extent so I think I have answered this question in the Q&A bar so um, let me repeat the question again yeah, that would be great so, yeah, for example, like the self-paced learning, we, we, we learn from simple example first and then gradually move on to the challenging example. It, it's just like we learn the cost grid solution. For example, let's learn the solution of the PDE. We learn the cost grid solution first. And it's very easy to learn the cost solution. But if we have some singularity around some points, then the, the error there, it, it might be large. We have to refine the grid. If we, we use grid based methods, then we have to re refine the grid to make it accurate around the singularity. But we don't have grid in, in deep learning methods. So we just learn another new network such that we can put more weights to the samples around the, the singularity so that the, the solution network can pay more attention to the singularity and, and get better accuracy. So this idea is like the, the, the multi-grid idea from cost grid to, to, to fine grid. Mm -hmm. um, and and just, that is, it's, help, help me understand this. So, so that is essentially what multi-scale learning is? Um, I, I just use this, this, the PD example to connect to the multi-grid. Okay. So okay. multi-grid, it's, it's an example for multi-scale solver. We, I, we have multi-scale in the solution. Let me say I asked the multi-scale learning question and it's not a thing, multi-scale learning. Thing. I just meant um, multi-scale in nature. Um, oh, okay, okay. I, I'm that sorry makes me feel that. better. I thought I had missed the major area of machine learning that maybe we should invent here. Okay, <laughs> but, but the, we so should then, invent it. So then with this, with this analog to the PDE world, I think I feel much better. Can you quickly explain me what is curriculum learning and, um, and uh, how it relates? Now that I know um, more about um, about the self-supervised learning? The, the curriculum learning and the self-paced learning, they are very similar. So um, I, I, I don't see major difference between these mm -hmm. ideas. Okay, so that, that's great because then we have uh, learned about two of these things. Um, and, uh, and the semi, so w which of the semi-supervised learning examples I may know would be um, most closely related to self-paced self learning? Um, semi-supervised learning, it's a, it's a very large category for learning, for learning. So the, the self-paced learning, uh, if, if we, in the, in the, well, it's very difficult to explain. They, they have some overlap and they are not different. They, um, we, we classify different kinds of learning according to different criteria. For example, we have we have supervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and reinforced learning as three major learning cases in machine learning. And um, um, it, we, we classify them according to how we use the data, mm -hmm. whether we use label data, whether we use unlabeled data, and whether we, we interact with the environment to, to, to learn. So um, this is one criteria to classify the learning algorithms. And for the self-paced learning, we, we just made this name according to the, the similarity to, uh, between the, the, some, some, learning, some, some learning process that human beings use, are using. Just like learning from simple example, gradually move on to difficult example. 
we could use simple label um, we, we, we could use simple label data first and gradually move on to same difficult label data then if in this case then we use self-paced learning to to learn the for for the supervised learning and, and if we use some unlabeled data in in the procedure then we we use um then we are dealing with semi-supervised learning okay so for so for now it's basically uh, supervised and but um, supervised now, with, in, ver with very hard talk, examples it's yeah, semi-supervised yeah. oh it is okay good. because okay. we use unlabeled data to augment the, the ah. imbalanced data set in the training data okay okay got it that really uh, helped me clarify this and hopefully for the person who asked uh, the question as well and Thanks. for everyone else